It is section 4.5, the Lubenberg Marquardt algorithm. The algorithm is developed for nonlinear least squares problems, particularly for problems arising in curve feeding. The feeding function y hat is a function of data and a parameter. The parameter vector p is in Rn. Given m data points xi, yi, the objective function is formulated as the sum of the weighted squares of errors, as in this equation, yi minus y hat is the absolute error. Now, yet i, a scaling factor, can be the measurement error. In this case, uh, this ratio is the relative error. For each data point, relative error is measured and squared and summed. Uh, by using a matrix factor notation, we can write in this way. Here, W is the weighting matrix, mm, a diagonal matrix of 1 over eta i squared. Uh, however, for the weighting matrix W, uh, you can choose it uh, uh, to be the inverse of the measurement error covariance matrix rather than diagonal matrix. More generally, uh, the weighting matrix uh, can be uh, uh, chosen uh, for the purpose of curve feeding. That means that you can choose a weighting metric so that the optimization uh, can be carried out uh, effectively, efficiently, and accurately. The measurement error, uh, which is called the observation error, is the difference between a measured quantity and its true value. It has two components, random error and systematic error. Random error uh, comes out due to randomness, and the systematic error is usually caused by a miscalibration of the instrument so that it affects all measurements as a bias. The objective function here is called the chi-squared error criterion because the sum of squares of normally distributed variables becomes um, the chi-squared distribution. We assume here the feeding function is nonlinear. If it is uh, linear, uh, then the problem is simple. And for nonlinear feeding function, uh, uh, we have to update the parameter um, by using iterative algorithms. Given initial estimation, we have to find the correction vector and now we update the parameter. We'll consider here the gradient distance method and the Gauss-Newton method and uh, uh, yeah, their blending. Let's begin with uh, the gradient distance method. As usual, the method is using the steepest downhill direction, which is uh, negative gradient. The gradient distance method converges well for relatively simple uh, problems and for also large problems uh, having thousands of parameters. Uh, sometimes the gradient distance method is the only workable choice. For Newton, mm -hmm, 
method or Newton's method, variants of Newton's method, uh, it can be very more expensive. Okay, for the gradient descent method, uh, what we have to get is the gradient. Okay, we make uh, just the derivative with respect to p, then from uh, that um, object function uh, from this term in blue, and uh, we can get uh, uh, that one, and along with the definition of the Jacobian metric, we can write in this way, so that this term, this vector will be now chosen with a negation and scaled by uh, gamma, and this is now the correction vector, delta p for gradient descent method. So iteratively, we can update through that um, uh, algorithm. Now we'll go to Gauss-Newton method. Uh, Gauss-Newton method is a method for minimizing sum of uh, squares object function uh, as in our object function, look here. Okay, and the method assumes that the object function is approximately quadratic near the optimizer and utilizes an approximate Hessian, we'll see detail. And now uh, for moderately sized problems, the Gauss-Newton method typically converges much faster than the gradient distance method. But the problem size is large, then we have to use the gradient distance method. Let's see here algorithm derivation. The first step um, in this derivation for the Gauss-Newton method is that we try to approximate the y hat uh, at p plus the updated parameter uh, in this way, so that this y hat at p plus now the Jacobian um, times the correction vector. This is a first order Taylor series expansion. Now we substitute this approximation uh, into the object function. And now that is, uh, the object function is uh, 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 this one now, okay? So that P plus delta P will be here y, y minus y hat, P plus delta P, and here also P plus delta P. Now y hat, P plus delta P will be uh, approximated by using <coughs> that uh, approximation. Then uh, you can write uh, in this way. Now uh, this is quadratic uh, in the parameter perturbation delta P. So here we try to minimize with respect to delta P and so that here differentiate with respect to delta P and equate to zero and we have that and delta P can be gotten by solving this equation. That is um, the rule for Gauss-Newton update. And so eventually the metric is on approximate Hessian. And also uh, M is uh, the number of uh, data points, N is the dimension of the parameter P. So uh, it requires M is larger than or equal to N, otherwise uh, the Hessian is singular. Okay, that is Gauss-Newton update. Now we blend them. Here the Lubenberg market algorithm is 
uh, now uh, blending algorithm uh, gradient decision and Gaussian Newton uh, in this way. Here, lambda is the damping parameter. Uh, for example, if we choose a small lambda, then is around the Gaussian Newton method. If you are choosing lambda large, then this portion will dominate so that it's uh, around the gradient density method. Right? So it is a blending algorithm. Now, when you implement this algorithm, then uh, it is, uh, the lambda is initialized to be large. Large means that it's about gradient density method and large lambda if we ignore this small contribution, then now it's the same as here. If you divide by lambda, then here over the one over lambda. Okay, let's here. Now, if you divide by lambda, then here that is one over lambda. You may think this one is gamma. Large lambda means small gamma. So along with a small gamma, now we start the uh, gradient distance method. So in the beginning, uh, more focus on gradient distance uh, method with a small learning rate. And as the solution improves, lambda is decreased, which means that now is approaching to the Gauss-Newton method. So that um, around the minimizer um, is converging much faster. So it's accelerated. However, if you try to uh, choose lambda smaller, then uh, it can happen so that it's really you can get bad approximation for the new update. So for example, in now the object function is larger than um, earlier value, then here uh, you have to increase lambda. Once lambda is increased, then it's toward the uh, gradient decent method with a small learning rate so that um, it's well uh, working so that it is called now a uh, downhill. So uh, that is um, now the change for uh, the damping parameter so that once something is wrong, well then try to use lambda large. Okay? But if it is working nicely, then try to reduce lambda um, so that uh, the convergence will be accelerated. Okay, there are many variants of the Rubenberg market method, uh, particularly for acceptance criteria that is related with this bullet. Okay, let's see one example. Here we have one example of acceptance criteria. Here we collected the, uh, the equations. Fp is defined in this way, and there is now approximation used in Gauss-Newton method. Now here, for uh, that mm, at new uh, the parameter, the value is defined in this way, and then rather than that one, we are using this approximation. Then here you know, we use the approximation. Then this value and that value uh, made up with the same, but it's a, a good approximation. So that we measure the ratio f of p minus f of p plus delta p. And now that is this one. And the bottom over there is that one. So that this is uh, from object function, we are measuring the difference. But now this one is now measuring the difference along with approximation. So ideally, 
this value, the ratio, must be around 1. If it is small or negative, then means that this becomes now larger than that one. So that uh, this uh, ratio can be used uh, as an acceptance criterion. Here, uh, after getting this quantity, and the step is accepted when the ratio is larger than uh, some threshold epsilon zero. That's one example of acceptance criterion. So uh, along with that, the, imp the algorithm can be implemented in this way. We start with initialization for initial direction and lambda zero, that is a damping parameter, and epsilon zero is the threshold. And for example, lambda zero can be 0 0.01, and epsilon zero, the threshold is 0 0.1. Now we compute the correction vector. Okay, correction vector will be computed from that uh, equation by inverting this matrix. Mm. Uh, get that one, and now uh, here for the correction vector, we measure rho k from the equation. Of course, by using some identity, we can simplify so that practically we can use it. And if rho k is larger than uh, epsilon zero, uh, that is acceptance. Uh, threshold, then we accept uh, the step and uh, update uh, the parameter. And now, lambda will be reduced, and we keep extra variable nu k too. Otherwise, if it is uh, not satisfied, then we try to make lambda larger, uh, twice larger. And here, again, the scaling factor is increased. So that once more, it's not accepted then. Now, four times larger, the lambda will be chosen. So try to increase the large, the, large, uh, the, the lambda so that it is focusing on the gradient distance method. And then, because the method is using downhill, stiffest downhill, so it will uh, converge, mm -hmm. and so that mm, here uh, such kind of implementation strategy can be developed. This is one example, and you can implement uh, a different way, but anyway, I'm showing you one example. Okay, this is the end of section and end of chapter. Thank you.